Hey, everybody, it's Tyler here at the Texas Championship, checking in team number 3005 Robo Chargers. Uh, the team here, already a district win under their belt, and they're here at the state championship looking really good. I love the look at this robot uh, so far and the functionality that goes into it, too. And to help me speak more about this robot, I have uh, Efren and Adrian. And this robot here, you got to look at just a great compact design, but nice wide intake as it goes through. I uh, do a very efficient shooter and a great climber. Let's talk more about this robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. If you are planning on attending the World Championship, come meet others in the fun and FRC Discord community with our combined meetup on Friday, April 22nd at 11 a.m. local. Location will be announced closer to the event, and you can stay updated by following in either the fun or FRC Discord. Starting out on the spot, let's talk about your intake a little bit. Uh, you guys got a really wide intake. I love that. Uh, it was get a lot of cargo inside your robot. So talk to me about the design and then uh, any changes you might have made throughout the season as well. So uh, we have some the design heritage with this intake. Uh, I think I believe it was 2019, Infinite Recharge. We sure. used a four bar intake. Uh, so we just really uh, moved it over here and kind of uh, changed it to fit the design for the game. Um, really big changes uh, we made was we just made the, so a problem we'd have was when the ball would go, when we try to intake the ball, it would just spin um, right here, uh, where the bumper is. Yeah. So to fix that, we just added some drawer, drawer liner <laughs> and it fixed everything. We, we tried uh, recatting the intake, changing the geometry, and all it took was some $4 <laughs> drawer liner. That's and it the way it works. Problems. So, so how does this actually start? Because you can't start it over your bumper numbers like no, this, right? So, uh, how we have it started is, well, I only have one hand, Efren. So it goes over the bar, and then uh, goes onto some uh, Velcro. Sure. And we just wiggle it on here, and then deploy. A. And it just pops out. And from you guys, from a legal standpoint, like it's okay to have it like covering the numbers, like you check yeah. it with inspectors and stuff. That's really cool. It's a, you know sometimes it's just the simplest things that make it work, right? It, that's we, awesome. We really like we're, we're once we like tested it out of our shop and we saw how much it improved the intake. We, we were just laughing it off because it was <laughs> it's all that time you you thought about other stuff, right? Yeah. So. Uh, let's talk as we go into like your indexer area and then up into your climber. I uh, really want to hear about like, do you use any type of sensors for anything? Uh, and then like the curb itself, how did you figure out like to make sure you're not going to jam or anything like that too? Um, so it all started in CAD with, uh, we use Onshape and it was just, um, you start off, you always start off with a, with a sketch. And so we, uh, we simply just, uh, we, we drew out a sketch and yeah. we just, uh, Change it over time, and eventually we got to block CAD, which is then you, uh, you just uh, lay it out with simple, no details, just the robot in blocks, and then fully detailed robot. Um, so actually, intake, get a ball, get a ball, ball. And it, it uh, indexer positions it to be shot. And then we can't shoot because it's facing this way. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you can see it, it just gets ready to shoot. And then uh, once it gets, once it gets, uh, once you want to shoot, the it's, we call these accelerators. They're always uh, running. Yep. Just idle RPM just to uh, really uh, cut down on the shoot time. Um, so this is always running. The flywheel is always running, uh, and it just shoots. Where does uh, where does your team like to shoot from on the field? Like I know you're able to do all over, but like what's kind of your preferred position? Well. I think it's just human error, but I really like the <laughs> shooting. I really like shooting from the uh, tarmac, right? Sure. Right outside the line of the tarmac is just our most accurate shot, and I'm really comfortable with it. But we can shoot from the tarmac all the way to like a couple feet past the safe zone. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about your sword driving just a little bit, but when you look at your robot, you have a swerve and a turret for it. Mm -hmm. uh, why was that important to your team from an objective standpoint to do both a turret and a swerve drive? So our team always wanted to uh, do swerve. And it's just that this year the field is flat, as uh, relatively flat, except the cable protector. But it's pretty flat, 
and it's perfect for a swerve. Yeah, so looking at uh, your wheels here, uh, what are you using for the material your wheels? And then talk to me about the different uh, types of ones you've gone through because I touched your wheels uh, at the end of the match. One of your mentors uh, told me and like it was still warm. So I'm curious to see what's worked and what hasn't for your team. So uh, the 3D printed rubber, we have uh, 62A, as you can see, destroyed. Um, it got us through maybe five practice matches. Sure. And it just shredded. Uh, so it has a lot of grip, but it's just no, no durability at all. And I believe this is, yeah, 70A. Uh, it, it has more durability, but not enough. Maybe a competition's worth. And it's sheared. Sure. Uh, and then this is uh, 90. It is 82A. Uh, it's just destroyed here because of uh, the design of the hub. Yeah. Uh, so we changed that, and this is the uh, current uh, durometer we're running with. I mean, I love hearing the trial and error that you've gone through. It's, I think it's a great testament to uh, other teams who are uh, experiencing similar things because some teams are like, well, just replace it and keep going. You guys have actually tried out different ones. I think that's really cool with that. So uh, let's wrap up in your robot. We're going to talk to Efren, who's going to talk more about your climber on here. So talk to me about it. Uh, and then anything from like a climb sequence standpoint we can show off too would be great. Um, so this is our climber. Uh, we have uh, a dual linear actuated uh, climber. So these go up. And then with that, uh, with them going up, we're able to hook onto the first rung, and we're able to go uh, pull ourselves up with uh, two motors that are actuating it. Um, so they go pretty fast. Uh, it, the climb uh, takes around 20, 23 seconds to get through, so it's pretty slow. On the, uh, but it does have a robust design. We changed through a couple of models with different gearings. Uh, there was once one motor powering uh, all of this components. Um, then we switched to two after a ton of failures. Um, and then we have the uh, actuated front uh, hooks, which move back and forward. And then we uh, they also uh, move um, from uh, different degrees, so we can pivot our robot. One of the things you mentioned, you said your climber is about 20 seconds or so, right? When I watch you, your team on the field, I mean, it looks like the, the uh, amount of time you're able to shoot cargo as well, too, has been getting quicker and quicker for your team. Is there a kind of that, that cost benefit point of no return where maybe you consider not going traversal and just shooting instead or something like that? Yes, um, we found out that shooting's be, uh, faster. Yeah. Uh, so we try to shoot as much uh, cargo as we can uh, quickly. And then if we have time or if we've uh, uh, agreed with our other um, um, uh, partners, whatnot, that are in our uh, team, our alliance partners. Yeah. Uh, we uh, go to traversal if we can't find a way that we could gain more points during that time, or we just go ahead and start shooting and then make it to the middle rung. We'll say. Makes sense. So 3005, uh, thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us some more about your robot here. Uh, phenomenal design. I can't wait to see how you do here at States and hope to see you at the World Championship as well. Good luck the rest of the way. All right. Thank you. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.